Hey guys, my name is Ismaus and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at how to make this paper effect in Blender. Uh, so one thing we're going to be making sure to do is uh, have control over where these papers go so that they never go outside our screen view area. Uh, that way we don't have to add a lot of papers in case a, a lot of them just fly away from the view area. Uh, that will also reduce on our computation time and uh, our render time. Uh, so as you can see they're all just within this area here and uh, if i want if you want it you can just widen that area to cover the entire screen or just uh contain them uh, like we are doing here you can see they're just rotating around here uh, they never really go outside these boundaries so let's dive into the tutorial and see how to do this effect now the first thing we're going to do is make our paper so i'm just going to use uh, this plane or you can add it using shift a mesh plane I'm also going to turn on my screen case so that you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to scale this to the size of a paper. Go to edit mode. Uh, make sure you apply scale by using Ctrl A, scale, and then add a few subdivisions uh, because we're going to be using the cloth simulator uh, to make other papers fold. And uh, we're going to need some subdivision for the resolution that the cloth simulator is going to use uh, for the deformations. So now that we have our paper, we can start simulating it by going to the physics tab and turning on cloth, hit play, and you should see the paper falling down. I'm going to add a plane on the ground so that we have uh, some ground for the paper to fall on. And I just so I can see the difference between my ground and paper, I'm just going to go to the overlays and turn on random colors so that we can see uh, the paper and uh, ground as separate objects. Now I'm going to move my paper just above the surface so that I can easily see it and uh, so that it's also not intersecting with the paper. Now if I play back, it will go through the ground uh, because we haven't set up any physics collision uh, with the ground. So I'm just going to select the ground and go to the physics tab, turn on collisions and now the paper should be able to collide with uh, the ground. Uh, one thing I noticed is that uh, sometimes you might ha it, the paper might still go through uh, the ground here and uh, one thing you can do is uh, just give uh, the ground a solidify modifier so that it has some thickness and uh, bring it above the collision uh, modifier or what you could do is just give your paper a slight X rotation and then it should be able to collide uh, with uh, the ground uh, that's only if it's just going through uh, the uh, the ground after you turn on our collisions okay so what we want to have is uh, have a little papers and also add in some turbulence and vortex uh, so that uh, they can rotate around whatever objects we add in the middle here so let's do that let's first start with adding wind so that we can blow the paper up into the air so for that i'm going to use shift a go to the force field and add a wind force uh, that's here uh, just make sure that it's facing up now uh, if we play back you can see that uh, it's not powerful enough to bring the object uh, the paper up so what we're going to do is increase first increase uh, the force field something like 500 and see how that affects the paper you can see it's going up just fine uh, that's what we want right now it's too heavy uh, the the strength is uh is too much and it's going to be adding Per frame it's going to be adding this strength per frame so this might go up forever and never really uh, come back down so what we can do is uh, animate this strength by going in and uh, taking this keyframe to add in a keyframe there you can animate this by hand or by using an the curve animation modifiers so if you hold on control tab while you are mo hovering over your timeline you can tab it you can tab it into your graph editor and now if you hit N, you can access the modifiers here. Now we just want to animate this noise graph. Uh, so you can use A to select all everything and then uh, the period key on your keyboard uh, to zoom in on, onto any keyframe you have on your timeline. We want to animate this strength uh, using the noise modifier here so that we add some randomness uh, to this noise we have. And you can see by adding this noise modifier to our strength, we are giving some variation into the wind so that it's not constantly blowing. Uh, what we need is uh, to have a stronger wind, a stronger noise, and uh, some variation. Let me expand this so that you can see how we have the scale. 
So we want to bring in some kind of variation so that the wind is never really blowing constantly and uh, that will make the effect sail even much better. Okay, let's see something like this. And I uh, can scale this. Now, if you look closely, you can see that uh, our wind, uh, let's just look at the value. The strength of our wind is ranging from 500 uh, here and uh, 495 and 505. What we want is uh, to have it turn on and turn off. So we're going to use this scale here so that we have it ranging from somewhere at zero and 500. So I'm just going to increase the strain, something like that. But we don't want it to go, neg to, go to negative values. Otherwise, we just start pulling our cloth down. So to, to stop it from going to negative values, we can add a limit uh, modifier and turn on the Y minimum limit and that uh, make it make sure that uh, zero is the minimum but uh, you can also bring it up if you want to and uh, now you can also use the offset value here which is just going to give you different values uh, for the x and y values uh, it doesn't matter that much uh, for this case but, uh, let's see how this is behaving now uh, we still have a lot of variation here so let's reduce that by reducing uh, the scale here or by increasing the scale here so that we have so that our wind has some time to settle down and also uh, come back up as you can see now uh, it can blow the the paper up and down but i think the strength is just a little bit too high so we're going to put it to around 500 you can see that's good enough now another thing we can add in uh, we need a lot of papers here so what i'm going to do is go to edit mode i select this paper and you sh use shift d to duplicate this around or you can just use also you can just do this in object mode but uh, you're just going to that will just add on the computation power since it's now two objects but uh, if you do this in edit mode it's just going to give you the same results uh, but uh, with less uh, computation power just make sure that uh, these don't uh, intersect in any way. So if we play back, you can see what we are getting. Now, there is quite a lot of uniformity here, especially for these four uh, up here, uh, because they are being acted on with a uniform uh, wind. Now, what we can do is add in some turbulence so that it's not, we break off, we break that uniformity. Uh, so let me add a turbulence force and just give it a strength here. Oh, let's try 1000. You can see already it has already broken that up now this is what i was talking about is that uh, you don't really have control over where the particles or where the papers are going uh, so you can see if we have our camera set directly here you can see that uh, within just a few frames all the papers are being blown out of away from the screen so what we can do is uh, just create another collider object uh, this time let's use um, a cylinder that's going to scale it uh, to the size uh, that I want. Let me turn back to edit mode to timeline here, something like this, so that it encloses the entire. And another thing, if we measure these papers, uh, the scale of the object also affects the simulation. Just have that in mind. So, uh, this paper is uh, one meter in scale, which is obviously too large. So, I'm just going to scale this down quite a bit at something like that and then let me measure again okay 20 centimeters is good enough now let's play this back again and just see how this has affected uh, the simulation okay now it seems that uh, the force we are using now is no longer that la is not is not enough to uh, to start uh, these papers to blow these papers away so we can either increase other paper you can either increase the force of uh, the wind and turbulence or we can select the papers and go to the to the cloth modifier and reduce uh, the mass of the vertex uh, which, will, which will essentially reduce uh, the side the weight of uh, the paper so we can play around with that until we get something that is uh, let's see point one now you can see that that is a little bit better we can uh, 
Uh, the papers are not too large and uh, they are now behaving more like papers. Uh, let's just shade smooth so that we don't see that uh, facetting going on. So I'm just going to shade smooth like that. Another thing we can do is uh, just to avoid these papers are from intersecting, we can go to the cloth modifier again and turn and make sure that we have uh, self collision turned on so that they never really intersect with each other. And uh, again, uh, one thing we don't want, like in the original render, we don't want the papers to go out of our view area. Maybe we can allow them to go above, uh, but uh, just not outside uh, this domain here. Uh, so to do that, uh, we have already created our cylinder, and we can give this a, colli a collision uh, property. But uh, if you go into the overlays and turn on first orientation, you see that uh, the normals are facing on the ins are facing outside. Uh, this can cause some collision, some simulation effects, some collision uh, problems, uh, meaning that uh, uh, we don't have, we won't have proper collisions uh, for the uh, for the papers. They might, you might see them going through uh, the surface. Let's see if we'll, if that will happen. So let's just see. Let's just make this smaller for a second. And, uh, maybe even okay, that's something like yeah. Apply scale. Let's simulate. Yeah, you can see that uh, some of them are already going through uh, the. The cylinder. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, we have the normals facing uh, the outside, so we want to flip them to the inside so that the papers can easily collide with the walls of the surface. So it's going to use Shift N in edit mode and uh, just use inside uh, so that they are flipped onto the inside. Let me just turn off this overlay for a second, and now I uh, should have them collide on the inside. Just so that we can easily see them, I'm going to go to the display properties and make sure that uh, I have wireframe turned on instead of uh, solid, mode, solid mode. Now, if we re-simulate, you can see that now the papers are colliding with the surface. And uh, since the surface, uh, this cylinder is invisible in our viewport, you don't really, you can't really tell that uh, there is a, a collider object there. Now. What we're going to do is uh, also increase our wind force uh, so that the we have more strength or more energy in the wind uh, so that they can blow these uh, papers are blown out uh, much uh, faster. So now let's tap back to our graph editor. I'm just going to increase the strength here just a bit. that maybe also increase our turbulence uh, what I'm going to do is also change uh, the icon for our turbulence uh, because it's a bit difficult for me to see so I'm going to turn it into a sphere just drag it up its position in the world space is not really that important unless if you turn on uh, fall if you give it a fall of value since we don't have a fall of value for any of our forces their position within our world doesn't really matter it's only the orientation, especially for the wind, as uh, that determines the direction of uh, the wind. But uh, for the falloff, it does, for the turbulence, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, so unless you turn on uh, the falloff as well. So uh, let's increase the turbulence here. Let's give it a size of, say, something like one. And, uh, let's see, one or Increase the turbulence a bit. Now you can see we have more energy here. We can also give it some increase the flow. This means that uh, the turbulence will have more influence over the papers uh, than any other force you have in your, in your scene. If you want the wind to have more influence uh, than the turbulence, then you would have to increase uh, the flow for the wind uh, so that it's higher than uh, the turbulence. Let's try 5,000, let's see. Okay, now that is more turbulent, but it's not giving us good results. So. so you can see, you can play with different settings and see what you get. You can also give it some noise amount here. 
that maybe let's increase the strength of our wind as well maybe increase so you can see you can create quite a lot of variation and uh, if you want to be fancy you can even animate other wind to, bl uh, to blow in different uh, directions Now, if you have more papers, uh, to create more papers, you can just go back to edit mode and duplicate this a few times so that we have quite a number of them. You can see now, we get something like that. You can, I guess I'm just going to pump this strength just a bit, something like a uh, 5,000 C and uh, the other thing you can add you can add say another object if you want uh, to have the objects collide with another object and just give this collision property as well Now you can see that uh, the paper, the papers collide with that object like we have in the original animation. Everything else is just lighting and uh, yeah, if you want to have the original files, this animation and uh, so that you can check out the project files, you can find that on my Patreon page. Thank you for watching.